Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this exercise, I'm going to show you how to box both maxillary and mandibular impressions with pumice and impression plaster. Up until this time, I am sure you have been exposed to the other two methods, which include boxing with wax and using a double pour method. We use this method quite a bit around the school and is one of the easier methods to box a final denture impression with. I'm going to begin today with the lower impression and show you the procedures that we used to box this impression with pumice and impression plaster. It's a very simple technique. To begin with, I'm going to pour a little water in our mixing bowl. And for this procedure, we use a ratio of one to one on a volume basis of impression plaster and pumice. You need a fair volume of this material to box the impression. Don't be afraid to use a little extra. It's always better to have a little too much than not enough. Now, I'm going to add some more water here. If you have a lot of time to work with this, it's considerably different than when you just use impression plaster. And I'm going to add a little more of both the impression plaster and the pumice. You do not have to hurry with this like you do if you're using just impression plaster. It's a little bit messy, but it, it's a very nice method for boxing these impressions. Now in a moment, when I have this mix to the right consistency, I'll place a large amount of it on the glass slab. It seems like the presence of the pumice will slow down the setting reaction considerably. We place a large amount of the mix on a glass slab, and it's not a critical procedure. And you notice I have quite an excess here. And simply place the impression down into the mix, trying to keep the residual ridge parallel to the glass plate. And you can, at this point, take your finger and begin to fill in the tongue space. Now, at this point, you can take your finger and go around the entire periphery of the impression, exposing enough of the flange so that you'll end up with an adequate boxing edge on your master cast. It's not particularly important if some of this material should inadvertently get into the impression because you can simply rinse the impression with water and this material will come right out of your impression. Now this one is about done and I'm not going to trim this yet. As in the interim time, I'm going to come back in a few moments and show you how to do this with the maxillary impression. I've already begun to make the second mix of pumice and impression plaster for the maxillary impression. Now you'll notice for the mandibular impression it was a rubber base impression and for the maxillary impression it is a zinc oxide eugenol impression. This method can be used for either material and it has certain advantages when rubber base is used. Again we place a large amount of material on our glass plate is simply press the impression down into the material trying to make certain that the residual ridge is parallel to the tabletop. Now at this point, we again pull the material around the impression, and you have enough time to work. You do not have to rush this. Then take your finger and begin to establish where you want to place the boxing edge. The 
It's very simple to do this with a maxillary impression. It's a little bit more difficult with the lower because of the tongue space. Now, I'd like to show you both of these for a moment. And you'll see there's a tremendous excess of material at this point. And we have a little bit of the pumice plaster mixture inside of the impression. I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes and I'm going to trim these with a model trimmer and then I'll bring them back and show you what this will look like after you've trimmed them properly. In the interim time I have trimmed the maxillary and mandibular impressions on the model trimmer and this material is so very soft, this impression plaster pumice mix, that it trims very, very easily. I would like to show you at this time um, each impression. Uh, we'll start with the mandibular, a few critical areas that we'll want to make certain that are not over trimmed. Now you notice we have a boxing edge that is about an eighth of an inch wide and that this boxing edge is maintained around the entire buccal and labial surfaces. The tongue space is filled and yet we have left about two millimeters of a lingual flange exposed. You do not want to completely embed the flange for you would have no roll on the periphery of your master cast. And the same holds true for the buccal flange. Leave about two to three millimeters of the flange out of the impression plaster pumice mix. The hardest area to trim on the, on the mandibular impression is just posterior to the retromolar pad. It is very important in this area that you can completely expose the pad of the impression and that you trim this area with a laboratory knife parallel to the base of the cast or the tabletop. The tendency is to trim this at an angle other than that parallel to the base of the master cast. This area has to be a little bit wider than the boxing edge, preferably a quarter to three-eighths of an inch for strength, because this area will frequently break on a master cast. I'd like to show you very quickly the maxillary impression. And again, you can see we have trimmed this to a width of about an eighth of an inch. If you're in doubt, I would leave this a little bit wider than that because you can trim your cast on the model trimmer after it is poured. After you've done a few of these, you'll feel very comfortable trimming this the width that you would like. The only area that is often uh, done wrong on the maxillary impression is posterior to the hamular notch and the posterior palatal seal area. Now in this area, we do not trim this an eighth of an inch, but at least a quarter of an inch for strength. And make very, very certain that you don't trim too close to the hamular notch as you come around the corner. So it's a very simple procedure. And you'll notice at this point that it does not look unlike a boxed impression with wax. The only difference being that instead of wax, we have this impression plaster and pumice mixture. I'd like to show you finally how we will box the impression with wax and make our final mold. This procedure is very, very simple. Now, if you are doing this, say, as a half-hour procedure and you want to carry it to completion, the cast will still be moist. And it's important to remember that for when you adapt your wax, your boxing wax to the periphery very, very tightly, you will notice that even though it is tightly adapted, that you will still have to hold on to this. It's very simple to adapt the wax when you've done a good job trimming the pumice mixture. I'm going to do the same thing with the mandibular impression. And you'll notice here that I've taken two strips and looted them together. Because of the height of a mandibular impression, we normally have to use two strips. For you see, if I used only one, I would not have enough room to pour an adequate cast. So I'm going to adapt this double strip to the mandibular impression. 
Now, I'm not going to proceed too far with this in front of the camera. You can trim the excess with a sharp blade and loot that together. Now, you'll notice how deep this is, much deeper than the, ba than the depth of the cast that we're going to produce. So it is a very good idea at this point to take a number seven wax spatula and simply mark a line on the inside of your wax to the depth that you wish the cast to be poured, usually about three quarters of an inch to a half an inch. You can always pour it a little bit thicker than you think you're going to need it and do the final trimming on the model trimmer after you are done. Again, when you are pouring these impressions, I'll show you here, as you put them on the vibrator, I like to hold it with my fingers tightly against the cast. Then if there's any tendency for this to slip because of the cast being moist, it will not move on me when I'm pouring the model. Now we simply pour our stone, our Yellowstone mix, into our box impressions and set them aside until the final set has been reached. And at that time, the casts are quite usually warm. And at that point, I like to remove the wax from the periphery and then let them sit for a while. You can leave them overnight if you like. Now, I'm not going to do this today because I'm sure you're all aware of how to pour into the mold we have produced. After you are completely done, all you have to do is take a laboratory knife and simply chip away the soft plaster and pumice mixture from the master cast and retrieve the impression. If it's a compound impression, you can merely throw it in water, very warm water, until it is soft and pull it away from the master cast. And in the case of an acrylic tray and a rubber base impression or a zinc oxide eugenol impression, you may have to flame the acrylic tray to retrieve it from the master cast. I have just demonstrated the method used to box maxillary mandibular impressions with pumice and impression plaster. It is a simple technique which can produce excellent master casts. Keep in mind that it is only one of three methods that we use here at the school, and basically you can make the choice to decide which method you would like to use to box or double pour your, your final impressions. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.